Next up on the broadcast, Phil Williams is the Director of Policy Strategy and General Counsel for the Alabama Policy Institute. Welcome back to Capital Journal. Good to see you. Uh, former senator, of course, uh, who has now been with the uh, Policy Institute for what, about a year or so? About a year, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've had you on the show a couple of times to talk about various issues. I want to focus on two uh, this time around, and I want to begin with tolling. It has been a recurring theme uh, on the show this weekend. Uh, there was recently an op-ed that was issued uh, by the uh, Policy Institute which says that tolling doesn't necessarily need to be totally off the table and there can be what we might call conservative tolling? Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, and this is not just our research, uh, the Heritage Foundation at a national level uh, published two reports this year at the same time all of that fracas was going on on the coastal areas regarding tolls. Heritage Foundation published a July 2019 report and again just last week a November 2019 report and their conclusions are and, and we support those conclusion, conclusions with our own research, is that in the, the need for revenue for new infrastructure, and by the way, I'm not qualifying whether they need a bridge or whether that bridge was a good idea or the level of tolling. All I'm saying is the research indicates you cannot say tolls are not conservative because in effect they actually are. They're, they're what some would call a user pays fee. It's, it's, it provides equity because those who use it are the ones who are paying for it. Uh, so yeah, tolls uh, have been much maligned as a some kind of a, a trick upon the people in a, in a non-conservative approach to to funding. Truth be told, the research shows just the opposite. The Alabama Policy Institute, being a conservative think tank, uh, do you feel like you were going out on a limb taking this position, given that there is that widespread yeah. view about uh, tolling is not necessarily conservative? No, to tolling may not be popular, but but let's just make sure we use the right labels. That's that's what we're saying. Um, yeah, if they want a bridge then concrete costs money. So no opinion there on whether they need a bridge, but if they want a bridge, then they are gonna have to figure out how to pay for it. And, and I'll be honest with you, from an equity standpoint, I'm sure that North Alabama doesn't anymore wanna pay for commuter access on the coast than the coast wants to pay for access in Huntsville or anywhere else. So that being said, what, what do you do? Um, now, there's a free market principle there too. You've got to take into account uh, how much are they setting the toll level, or what level are they setting it at. If you're setting it at a, at a rate that the market can't sustain, well, no one's going to drive on the road uh, unless that's their only route. Uh, also, if you're taking what was a free infrastructure route and suddenly putting a price on it, then there's a consideration too. But in the broad scheme of things, from the standpoint of how do you fund something extra, that is almost entirely regional in nature. It's not something the whole state will drive on. It's not like I-65 going down through the middle of the entire state. It's the I-10 bridge across the Bayway, period. Uh, tolls actually come out, according to the Heritage Foundation and the Alabama Policy Institute, as being one of the most conservative methods of funding. Basically, because I hear you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a, it's a user fee at its core. That's right. It, it comes down to, if you use it, you will help pay for it. It also uh, it negates the ability for uh, electric vehicles to be exempt from helping pay for that infrastructure. It negates the, uh, the argument that the farm to market roads in Cherokee County aren't done yet, why are we doing this? It, it negates the arguments that uh, this is not something that is good for the whole state. It, it goes straight to the core of if you need it, if it's regional, if it's not otherwise funded, guess what? Yeah. Making people pay as they go is the best way to do it. This obviously was a very passionate issue along the coast. That's uh, what I understand. In, in the last year, uh, the word toll almost became taboo to certain folks. It's a four-letter word. There. Is this a hard sell uh, for those folks down there who feel very passionately that tolling is not the answer at all? I don't know. I mean, uh, I just visited my son and daughter-in-law and my grandbaby. Uh, up in Virginia recently, and they've got tolls all over the place. I, I don't know. There's so many te technological advances. I mean, it, you can buy a pass, and it just clicks as you drive past it. Um, uh, you know, I I pay to get out of the parking deck at the Birmingham airport. It just, so I don't know. I, I certainly, I'm not looking forward to driving across the bridge and having to pay a dime. I'm, I'm really not. Uh, and I'm not advocating that we should just have to pay more money. But I am saying the toll research proves is actually a conservative approach to revenue funding for 
uh, infrastructure. Uh, your research also comes at a time when there is a proposed constitutional amendment for lawmakers to consider next year, which would essentially ban uh, tolls in the state, uh, at least except for certain very specific uh, circumstances. And the people who successfully defeated the Mobile Toll Project uh, still have a very active uh, lobby, if you will. Uh, they say no tolls uh, whatsoever. So this is a very divisive issue in this state. Yeah, like, like everything, you have your constituencies. Um, and there's going to be um, any number of opportunities for someone to, to, to have a say in the overall. Uh, I have a hard time believing they can crush the market by saying there will never be a toll in Alabama. You, you, at that point, you are, um, you know, I would think as a lawyer speaking, you, you might even be getting into what's known as a burden on interstate commerce where you have disallowed something that the neighboring states do allow. Uh, and uh, at the same time, you're also looking at throwing the uh, entire opportunity for a public-private partnership, which, you know, takes the burden off the taxpayers you're throwing that out the window because you don't like tolls. Well, okay, do you like taxes? Because where's the money going to come from? I would much rather see a bridge built with a toll for the user than to see a tax increase for the whole state. Um, and I think if you polled the state at large and said, do you want to pay for a bridge on the Bayway? The vast majority of the state would say, no. Um, so. If you need the bridge, and that's where we get down to, if you need the bridge, you got to figure out how to pay for it. Mm. So the bottom line is here, uh, you feel, the Institute feels, that uh, the, the tolling option should be left on the table. It shouldn't be pulled completely off the table. You, you can't pull it off the table. Not if the bridge is necessary. And like again, I'm, I'm, we're not even in that fight. If the bridge is necessary, that's their call. That's local leadership making the determination. Mm. However, it should not be taken off the table. Let's change gears now to right. uh, education. Ooh, uh, yeah. There's also a, a policy uh, paper that the Institute recently put out. Uh, I believe uh, it was affectionately dubbed hashtag dead last yeah. because unfortunately we do rank dead last in the nation now where math scores, student math scores are concerned and I think we're like 47th where student reading scores are concerned. So uh, yeah. we have uh, a lot of reason for concern here. Yeah, we, we should be overly concerned. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no level of concern that we shouldn't be tapping into right now. The, uh, the op-ed you're talking about, Dead Last, was um, actually followed the one that I wrote uh, the week prior, which was called Off With Their Heads. So that's, that's kind of where we are. It's, it's, it's to the point of uh, pitchforks and torches and in, in marching on the state school board because policy and what we've always done before obviously does not work. Mm -hmm. We spend uh, about $9,200 per student per year our spending is somewhere around 40th to 42nd in the nation, but yet all of those that spend less than us actually do better than us. Okay, that tells you something's wrong. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, Don, one of the things that's just galling to me is when you break the categories down, the NAEP uh, Nation's Report Card breaks it down by reading, writing, math, and science. And in the math, we rank 52nd in the nation. We are behind Puerto Rico and the Department of Defense schools that teach our kids overseas. How can we be 52nd? Well, we are. And, um, you know, you can't look at it and say, thank God for Mississippi anymore, because Mississippi spends less than us per kid and passed us this year. Mm. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a constitutional amendment that voters in the state will decide next year, which yeah. proposes moving us from an elected school board to one appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate. Those who supported it in the legislature this year said something similar to what you just said about obviously something is not working with our current system, and as you put it, uh, off with their heads. Were you referring to those school board members? Uh, indeed, I was. I was referring to the AEA the state school board, and I was actually even questioning whether higher ed needs to take a look at the way it trains teachers. Um, there has got to be a merit-based system in place for teachers to know that if they, if they achieve, that they will be rewarded, and that tenure is not the only reason why we keep teachers. Uh, but at the same time, there are others that have to take some ownership in this. Um, and, and we've got to go ahead now, and I would just say it's this time. We've got to break the status quo. There has to be some transformational change. One of those that, that API does see as being transformational, and it's just time to go for it, is the elected school board. We are behind that measure. 
Uh, we support it, and, uh, and we believe it's necessary. We're not taking away the people's vote. It, it, if API ever took away people's votes, we would be against our original charter in, in looking at limited government. We see the governor having the opportunity to have a team that they work with, any governor, not just the current governor, any governor, as being uh, a satisfactory example of the people's vote. You vote in that governor who has an education policy platform and they actually have a chance to do something with an appointed school board as opposed to elected people from around the state who don't even have to have the qualifications of an educational background. Um, well, we've been doing that for a long time and we're 52nd in the nation. I think it's time to try something new. Uh, you, um, you tread into some uh I don't know, treacherous waters here uh, as well. This seems to be a very divisive issue uh, as well. Well, it, you know, it, if you're gonna go ahead and just stand up and say, here's a new way to go, that's what you have to do. Um, I think it was uh, Margaret Thatcher who said, uh, true consensus is the absence of leadership. Hmm. If we're always agreeing, then no one's out front saying, here's a better way, follow me. Uh, we believe there are some better ways out there and we're willing to say so when we see it. Taking the politics out of this school board process has also been a phrase we heard a lot during the debate over this constitutional amendment in the legislature earlier this year that if they didn't have to run for political office versus being appointed but the other side will say well just as much politics would remain in political appointments so to speak. Uh, yeah, some would say there's a political appointment. The interesting thing about this is if, if someone is nominated for appointment, they still have to be confirmed by the Senate. So if you had someone who was appointed that had zero qualifications or had a, um, a background that was questionable or, or you know, stated positions on education that are in contravention to what the legislature believes is good, then they don't get appointed mm. because the legislature doesn't have to confirm them. Um, the legislature also has the power of impeachment. If somebody gets into an appointed position like that and, and goes rogue, so to speak, uh, for offenses that uh, rise to the level of impeachment, the legislature can take action and have them removed. Um, that's written into the bill. So those who vote for this are voting for those rights and those appointing authorities. Obviously, there are other things that we need to do uh, in this vein, but uh, the Policy Institute thinks we need to start with uh, this uh move to an appointed school commission? Yes, um, uh, we, we are taking that position actively right now. That after researching it, after going through, and by the way, when I say researching it, I mean looking at all the states, uh, examining uh, the outcomes for other states that have done something similar to ours. Um, when you take into account those that have an appointed school board and combine that with those that have a hybrid system of a you know, quasi appointment, or um, by and large, they do better. Uh, so. You can see these policy papers on the in the institute's website, uh, I assume, and you also have a podcast which is coming we out, do. right, about uh, this uh, the school issue and the tolling issue. We do. Uh, we we host a podcast uh, weekly, every other week. I'm the host on that. Uh, the podcast is called 1819. Of course, that's the year Alabama was founded. So the 1819 podcast is out there. Uh, we have one on toll bridges coming out the week after Thanksgiving, and we. Uh, just issued one where myself and Representative Chris England dialogue about party politics. Phil Williams is the Director of Policy Strategy and the General Counsel for the Alabama Policy Institute. Always nice to see you. Good to see you, Don. Thanks. Thanks for being here. And Capital Journal. We'll be right back.